This a Radigan story, real reggae story, foundation story. My name's David Radigan, um, hey. and I'm a DJ. Yeah. Attention, please. This is for David Radigan. Just want to say thank you for all the wonderful music that you have provided for us through the years. David Radigan is the master of them all. In the dance of peace. Radigan! Thank you. And tonight is my birthday. Yeah, my father's from Scotland, my mother's from Ireland, but I was born in Hanover. At five o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday the 24th of June, 1951. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Nelson Mandela speaking. Good job, David Radigan, for playing your music from the 80s till today. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you, Radigan. I want to say thank you for joining me tonight. The music is like a jazz. It's like a jazz thing. If you love jazz, you love reggae. It's like someone injects you with a fever. And once you have the injection, there is no known antidote. Come here. to North Africa. So we lived in Tripoli and Derna. Great memories there as a child of growing up, playing down on the beach and it was it was a beautiful time. We eventually ended up back in England and uh, they moved out to a village in the countryside called Kidlington and that was beautiful. Boyhood days, fishing, football, rugby. Thoroughly enjoyed my life in the countryside. The tide is high, so why holding on? Your show get flopped by Radigan. I hear you're the type of sound who keeps a just like that. Whoa, no, whoa. My first exposure to Jamaican music was my boy Lollipop, Millie. There was a television program called Ready, Steady, Go, which is on every Friday night, and you just, no one missed that. I first saw the Ronettes, you know, James Brown, and my boy Lollipop was sung by this little schoolgirl from Kingston who came on handing out lollipops and, and it was just, oh, who's this? It was and this driving beat. Then by 66, 67, 1967, I was 16 years old, and uh, I was discovering more and more the music of Jamaica, ska, blue beat. Summer of 67 was the summer of love. The Beatles were number one with All You Need Is Love. 
We had flowers in our hair and we were dancing to 007 Desmond Decker, Guns of Navarro and the Scatterlight. It was just this summer of, of intense music and on the seafront there was a, a, a cafe called The Grapes um, and on the jukebox was what a bam bam yeah, what a bam bam bam, what a bam bam, the Clarendonians, Rudy Bam Bam, it was just couldn't believe this record. And downstairs in the basement was a club called Sloopies. And at the weekends, Jamaicans used to come down to the coast in red double-decker buses, which they'd hire out, and they'd party. And there was this big jukebox, and you punched in Dancing Mood by Delroy Wilson, Guns of Navarone. And it was this driving scat music, it was, and I was captivated by the energy of it, the, the excitement, the rhythm, and the, these voices, Dancing Mood by Delroy Wilson, it's this aching vocal. It was inevitable really, I was such a fanatical record collector that I used to play records on my little dance set Viva record box uh, in my bedroom upstairs in the back room and I would look out across the gardens of the, in the other house to see if the, any of the other kids were responding to the record I was playing, I mean how sad is that, you know, At full volume and looking out to see if anyone's listening to my Derek Morgan record. The music is very important. It's a driving force in the lives of most young people. When I first heard, you know, Otis Redding and Marvin Gaye. Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions, I was blown away, James Brown, and then I heard the Wailers and, uh, and the Prince Buster and the Scatterlights, these early ska recordings and ska artists. I was fascinated by this. From those early years, you come into my home, to my record collection, my library, you'll see all sorts of music. When I first heard Tracy Chapman, Fast Car, uh, Sari is all that, you know, I'm absolutely in love with Angie Stone. You know, if you didn't have Al Green's first album in your record collection, right, you, were, you were from another planet. Better get to reggae. I was very, very fortunate because I was born at the right time. When the music was born, I was a teenager. And this was a revolution. Of course, this music wasn't being played on radio. This was underground. You discovered it, you heard it. Uh, there was pirate radio. There was Radio Caroline in the North Sea. There was Tommy Vans playing Ram Jam by Jackie Mitu, which I love so much and used to play in the school discos myself. And was en ended up being called Ram Jam. That was the beginnings of of DJing, it's 1967-68. Shake your hip, rock your body line, shake your shoulders, everything in time, then sing. David Riley. I started buying records from Jamaica when I was 14. I love this music more than anything in the whole world. Some call it Spanish stuff, but it's a rapid girl rock. As a reggae fan myself, I always wanted to go to places where I could hear reggae. So literally for 19 years, we, we, me and Papa Face were based there and Captain Ken for a while with us as well. And that was the place where people came to hear reggae. It was the only reggae club in London's West End. And we played all styles of music, you know, Prince Buster was down there one night, there was I Roy on the mic another night, you know, Mick Jagger and David Bowie in there dancing. You know, you never knew who was going to come through the door. Special request. I established a new residency at uh, the Subterranean, 
all sorts of wacky things happen down there, impromptu performances, Tom Jones, you know, Wycliffe, Luciano, so many artists passing through. And also for, for the last uh, 13 years I've played regularly at the Beaufoy Arms in South London in Lavender Hill. I played there every week for many years. Those residencies in London are very important to me. Right now, we are at the Beaufoy Bar, and we are in London, Battersea. My bar is the first reggae bar in London. The summer of 1983, running on Marriage JBC Radio 1. We pride ourselves in having the best DJs. And of course, with David Lee, that set an example. Well, David, you've done well for reggae music, and long may you continue. So it's always been very important for me to have a residency, because that's where people can meet, and people in the industry can meet and circulate, and uh, you know exchange thoughts and views on music and, and also fans could come. Wherever he goes, everywhere since we've been what 15? Since we was really young, 15, we come here. We love yeah. him, he's just brilliant, man. The music's wicked. It makes you chill out after being right. a mum from Monday We're to outside. Friday, We're Saturday of the rave, isn't it? Anyway, good night. All right, then. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Pop down, boy, chill out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All nice and decent celebrity crew, hang on because you're tuning to David Radigan. I was absolutely delighted to, to be involved in that and, uh, and that was the start of my career as a broadcaster. BBC Radio London, Gaylene Martin made it happen. This woman is the first ever person to get reggae artists to come on my radio programme. She did it, the Abyssinians, the Gladiators and we thank you for all you've done. And then Capital Radio asked me to join them in 1979, September. That really was just, you know, fantastic because they gave me complete artistic control and then allowed me to get on with it. And I did for 11 years. I'm gonna keep them talking, laughing, they're talking, yeah. Ronnie Gun got a lot more coming. I mean, I was getting to meet the stars I'd admired for years, the Abyssinians, you know, the gladiators. I was sitting in the presence of Albert Griffiths, you know, the gladiator. I was sitting in the presence of Bernard Collins from the Abyssinians. And my favourite record, Declaration of Rights, the, the man who, who sung lead vocal on it, sitting here. I'm not interviewing him. Looking back, and thanks to Capital Radio for, for locking on and supporting me in that, Yellow Man, we brought him over. We've had to wait two years! Two years! The Capital Radio brought him here for you tonight for the Capital Music Festival of 1983. Are you ready? Who can make the dance run? Who can make the dance run? Bring him! Bring the other man! Then we brought Sunsplash in 1984 and again in 1985 and 86 and the final one was 87 on Clapham Common was thousands and thousands of people bringing Prince Buster in with the Scatterlights for the first one in 84 at uh, Crystal Palace Football Park and then seeing that was a great honour and to introduce Dennis Brown and Freddie McGregor for, for shows like that was 
you know, I was very, very proud to, to have been involved in that. Night time finds me. With Radigan. I'd worked for BFBS as well uh, from 1984, doing reggae programs for them, which went into Germany and where all the faces of forces were based. And that was a very interesting experience. BFBS. This is Seed from Berlin. Big up David Rodigan, biggest reggae promoter in Europe. I remember listening to your BFBS broadcast. Only big tunes. What's that? So, uh, What's this? Rodigan's Rockers on BFBS. All right, David, maximum respect. This is Sound Quake. And you see, you inspired us so much over the years. Remember 1988, down in Neon Steinhagen, Omnishad, what a big dance. Well, I'm the killer. Tell them, say, I'm in the Barney Miller. Tell them, I'm not chocolate, I'm not vanilla. Last year, I was in a dance in Essen, and a chap tapped me on the shoulder and he said, What's it like to have seen all your seeds grow to this? These people were all schoolboys listening to you in 1984, again. There was an influence there that they heard on the radio. Most of the thing I learned in reggae music was this man called David Ronigan. Former times, David Ronigan, Ronigan's Rockers on BFBS. I will never forget that, see? 1990, I felt that at last London had an urban music station that was going to play black music, urban music and dance 24 hours a day and I very much want to be a part of that musical revolution. Yes. David Rodigan on KISS 100 FM. And I joined KISS and went full time, daytime. I presented a lunchtime show, and the afternoon show, the breakfast show, the drive time show, and my weekly reggae show. Sunday night, Kiss 100, we say maximum respect to Matt White. Thanks, Matt. Greetings, reggae fans, for the next two hours. The best reggae music in the world. Right here on Kiss 100. Down Jamaica way when the rhythm is hot, they cut version after version. If you want 20 versions of that rhythm, the Clappers rhythm, capture it on that album on Greensleeves Records. Little things please little minds. Um, when I was very young, I dreamed of having my own proper sound system, actually building it all. So I thought it was really important that I should have a stamp to stamp my records. So I created my own little rubber stamp. Uh, Rodigan's sound system, Burning Spear, uh, 1974, what a record that is. Essentially what I do is I spend the day before uh, preparing by listening to all the new recordings that have been released. I also got on Tuesday night some new records that were given to me by uh, Papa Face who works at Dovelender. Okay, here we are in Labrock Grove. Dop in the record store and uh, going going in to get my uh, selection of tunes. So I listen to all those new songs and uh, from that <clears throat> make a selection for to the show. Sunday nights on Kiss 100. This is special now. Ha! No other sound in the world can play this. This is Stephen Marley and Christopher Ellis for David Ruddy. They love you, David Ruddy. They do. They can play like you. Sure. you play that upset them and the things you say that distress them Roddy wanna spend your whole life playing tune cause you love this hey Roddy playing till the end of time the other 